Now, we are edging closer to the first match of the year. The question is, who can stop Novak Djokovic at the Australian Open? The 10-time champion has been dominant inside Rod Laver Arena in Melbourne over the last two decades. And he begins the year's first tennis major as the favourite in the men's field. Having won the last 28 matches, he's played there. Meanwhile, fellow world number one, Iga Swiatek, enters the women's event with a favourite status. But has the likes of the defending champion Arena Sabalenka and US Open winner Coco Golf to contend with. Another dark horse is the four-time major champion Naomi Osaka is making a comeback after giving birth to her first child. Now to talk to us more about the Australian Open is the South African former tour professional tennis player J.L. Diaga, John Lafney. Good morning and welcome to, uh, uh, to welcome to sport this morning, uh, John. It's really great for you to join us all the way from Thailand, I hear. Uh, I've touched a little bit on some of those big names that we can look forward to come this weekend. Mo Mouth-watering tennis. What can you expect from Australia? Hey, Lebu, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, it's going to be it's exciting. The Australian Open is always one of my, was always one of my favorite um, events and leading into the event, uh, you know, some of these players that you just mentioned are really playing well. I was fortunate, you know, to be part of the World Tennis League in the end, towards the end of December, where most of these players were, you know, playing and could watch them from court side. You know, Nova Djokovic, obviously, he loves Australian Open. He's he's going to try and break the the record. Um, but you know, you know, towards the end of uh, last year, you know, Sinner was really playing well. He beat him twice. Um, you know, uh, looking at Medvedev, um, he was in my team at the World Tennis League. He's playing really well at the moment. You know, Andre Rublev won Hong Kong. Dimitrov won in uh, in Brisbane. So you always have to look at those guys. You know, going into the event on form, it's going to be very tough um, to beat Novak uh, down in Australia. But you know, I've, I've, I wrote down a little bit of a list of players that I thought on the main side. You know, Novak's obviously my my favourite. You know, with Sinner and Medvedev as contenders. But then you have Alcaraz, you have Rude, you have Rooney that played well in Brisbane. Alex Demonor from Australia, um, you know, he beat three top ten guys in the United Cup. And he always plays well, you know, when he's playing for Australia and Davis Cup. So it'll be interesting to see how he can handle the pressure when he's playing in front of his uh, home crowd. On the women's side, um, for me, the lady that's in form uh, right now is uh, Rebakina. She's playing unbelievable. She's, you know, she's powerful. Um, she's getting into a stride. She played really well, beating Zabalenka in Brisbane. Zabalenka obviously has a, had a very, um, you know, steady 2023. Then you talked about Coco Golf. I mean, she's uh, everybody's talking about her. She she won in Auckland. She's playing really well. Yes. And then Swiatek, you can never, you know, uh, you know, she's the number one player in the world. You know, she's she's a, she's just different. You know, from a mental point of view, she's for me, she's so on fire. But then, obviously, from the African continent, we're looking at Ange Jabeur. We really want to, to do well always, uh, you know, um, to see hopefully at Australia, you know, that's that Grand Slam. You know, she's, yeah. she's pushing to win a Grand Slam. And can that be in Australia? And you, you mentioned Naomi Osaka. I think it's going to be tough for her to be out for a year. She's going to need a little bit more matches before she can compete with the top players in the world. So you've also touched on Osaka obviously making a comeback after giving birth. Um, and we just saw her a couple of weeks ago and how she performed. But let's take it back to Alcaraz. You've mentioned Alcaraz. How's his form going into the Australian Open? Looking at the fact that he'll obviously want to dethrone the current world number one in Djokovic. Yeah, he, he hasn't played so much. I haven't, I haven't seen um, too much of him in the beginning of the year. But obviously, he's a great player. He's going to push. You know, there's always these guys that put their goals down, what they're going to aim for. Um, he, he's been playing well. Um, I just think that somebody like a sinner, you know, I made a prediction the other, other day, and I said towards the end of their careers, when they're done, I think that sinner is going to have a better record um, than Alcaraz. The reason mm. why I'm saying it is that Alcaraz has got so many shots. Um, you know, he, he can do anything. Where he has to develop a few things and he can even get better. But it's going to be interesting. You know, I think the surf is going to, going to suit him. Obviously, you know, pushing for Novak's number one spot is going to motivate him. And it's going to be interesting to see how he can compete with all these other guys. And Osaka's form, do you think she can really come back into such a high-pressured environment in Australia? Yeah, I mean, she's, she's was one of those players where a lot of the, um, on the women, to the ladies, they win a slam and they go away for, you know, for a year or so. Where she actually won more Grand Slam titles than she won WTA tournaments. So she's proven that she can play at the highest level. She can take the pressure. 
it is just tough to play, you know, for her. She's been away from the game for a year. Uh, to come back straight away and to win a slam, yes. Can she make the quarterfinals, maybe the semis for sure. I just don't know that, uh, you know, being away for a year that she can compete with the, uh, the likes of Rabatina, Sabalenka, Coco Goff and, and Swiatek. Uh, this is also quite different this time around because we're seeing a draw that's in the women's side that's assembled one of the best in the field in a long time. It is exciting to see those names because they all are right at the top of their peak. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's the first time in a while that they're talking about, you know, the, uh, the top three in, mm. in the women's where they're competing with Rabaki Nazabalenka and Swiatek. And now you throw in a Coco Golf that's really in form. Uh, you know, after she's won the U.S. Open. So it's exciting for women's tennis to see a lot of good players. Yeah. Um, there's more than one player. Um, you know, those three are competing. That's what made the men's game so popular with when we had the, the top four in the yeah. world, uh, you know, and obviously um, then the best, you know, with Novak and, and Roger and Rafa. We need to see that on the women's side with these rivalries because that will draw a lot more people to, to watch uh, the women's game. And how important, JL, is it for all the players to establish ascendancy in the first major of the year? Yeah, definitely. If you do well, you set yourself up for the year. You know, you go into it with a lot of confidence. But now, the, you know, um, the schedules have changed so much. And, you know, if you think about Novak, Novak finished Davis Cup. He had a week off and then he had to play, start training. And 10 days later, he played an exhibition. Um, mm. So it's not that we have four or five weeks off where they can really, you know, do a good um, you know, pre-season training. The women, on the other hand, for them it works better. They finish towards the middle of November. They have a lo longer break and pre-season uh, than the men. But if you are if you firing in the first part of the year, the first three months of the year, it gives you a massive um, head start for the year with confidence, points, and obviously ranking. And if you have a good ranking, you get good seedings. Uh, you know, in the majors, and uh, you know, there's definitely an advantage in doing well in the beginning of the year. JL, before I let you go, we also do have wheelchair tennis uh, happening uh, for South Africa at the Australian Open. Our very own Keiji Munjani is there preparing for the tournament. Um, what is your thought on her performances in building up to the Australian Open and what she's done for South Africa? Yeah, I mean, she has, she's had a great uh, 2023, you know, uh, winning slams. You know, getting to the finals of tournaments and, and the big events because that's, I mean, for her, that's, that's what it's about. It's playing in the big events and doing well. I mean, she's been a great ambassador for, for South Africa and I really hope that they can continue, you know, doing well. The wheelchairs, uh, tennis over the last 10, 15 years have done really well, um, for South Africa when it comes to the big names, um, and the big tournaments. So they definitely continue it and I really hope for her. I mean, her dream is to become number one in the world. And uh, if she continue with the form, uh, I'm definitely she has the capabilities to reach that dream. All right. So let's leave it there, John. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from Thailand. We will be touching base with you throughout the tournament. Uh, obviously, you're coming back to South Africa. Hopefully, you'll be joining us in studio as we go through the Australian Open.